Morning, Trainiacs. Um, yeah, winter is crap in Winnipeg. Just, just soul crushing, potentially could kill you kind of crap. So as we are about to launch Team Trainiac and we've got the new triathlonterran.com, we're starting to write more articles and I'm going to be doing podcasts that's just like solo about training. And uh, one of the first ones that I wanted to address is like the difference in a sprint versus Ironman triathlon training plan and whether it's a sprint or it's an Olympic distance versus a half Ironman distance. It's kind of like a spectrum. So I'm going to give tips on as you go longer and longer, how do you need to adjust your triathlon training plan? Brr. All right, so what we're gonna go through here today are the different requirements for speed, strength, and endurance. In the broad scope of it, most all triathlon training comes down to that, regardless of whether you're training for a sprint or an Ironman. We're gonna start with the most similar, then end with the most different between sprint and Ironman, and then we're also going to talk about where you should be with your training zones. And we're gonna do all that after that swim because the aqua sizers are partying super loud. Winter definitely didn't lift while I was in there. So, first thing, let's talk about really aggressive speed work. And this is whether you're on the bike or running, we're talking like 10 to five minute really hard effort. We're starting off with this being very similar regardless of whether you're doing a sprint or an Ironman. And a good example of this is in February when we were down in Scottsdale, we were doing some filming with Sarah True who was training for her first full Ironman distance race. She was still at that point like four or five months out from her first full distance race, banging out 400 meter repeats at a really hard effort. And there are so many reasons why, regardless of whether you're doing a really fast race, like a sprint or a really endurance focused race, speed work is incredibly beneficial. Number one, it increases a mitochondrial density. That's going to help your limbs process oxygen function a lot better instead of focusing just on like long, slow, steady distance aerobic efforts in like zone two, which helps your cardiovascular system. Speed work helps your mitochondrial density in your limbs. Related to that, you also recruit more muscle groups because you have to push so much harder. Your body is like, holy smokes, I need every muscle I got. So you start recruiting more muscle groups. Next thing that makes a huge difference for us amateurs, because it's probably the biggest limiter for us regular people who aren't built like Greek gods and goddesses is that these speed efforts tend to burn fat for up to 48 hours after the workout is actually done. So helps us get a better body composition. And then finally, it's much more practical to have a really purposeful speed workout during the middle of the week for, again, us amateurs. We're busy, we have day jobs, we have families, we have other commitments. We can't just train constantly day in and day out during the week. Our schedule tends to be very crunched. So to get in a really good aerobic workout, you need hours and hours and hours. An hour to an hour and a half isn't necessarily going to do it. But if you do a really purposeful, hard speed workout, that's say 30 to 45 minutes, you can do a huge amount of benefit for you. So that's why we have included basically whether you are doing a sprint or an Ironman, a lot of the same speed focus type workouts. They're very similar and in some cases identical. All right, let's get home. This is, this is chilly. All 
I did roughly a thousand of those in case you were wondering. So let's talk next about strength. Strength, whether you're doing a sprint or an Ironman, the requirement for it is fairly similar, but just a tad more different than those speed workouts. But the outcome that we're looking for between sprint and Ironman when it comes to strength workouts is just a little bit different in some regard. Well, for starters, we wanna do strength workouts for muscle recruitment, that's the same. Whether we are doing a sprint or an Ironman, we wanna be able to access more muscles. We wanna be durable. So we want to be able to accept the load that's placed on our body with swim, bike, run. We need a strong core, we need strong connective tissues, we need strong muscles, ligaments, all the tissues that are in our body. And strength training does that, whereas a lot of endurance training tends to break it down. And the longer you go from sprint to Ironman in distance, the more important that is, because the more volume you're gonna to have to do, the more repetitions of pounding you are going to place on your body, whether it's running or biking, all of those additional movements place stress on your body. It's not quite so severe in sprint for us age groupers, because you can probably get away with training four to eight hours a week, but when you start getting up to Ironman, you wanna be really durable because you're gonna have 13 to 20 hour weeks regularly. One similar thing is that strength training helps burn a fair bit of fat. It increases your metabolism. It releases hormones that promote fat loss. So that helps you whether you're in a sprint or an Olympic. And then when you get right down to it, if we are lighter by all of that fat burning and we are more powerful, our strength to weight ratio is going to be improved and that's going to help us regardless of what distance we're doing. Just think about it, if you are the same 150 pounds come race time, but you have been able to push a heck of a lot of weight and translate that raw strength into sport specific strength in the swim, the bike and the run, you're gonna be a lot faster than if you were 150 pounds, hadn't built up a ton of strength during the strength training part of the year and then gone and not even translated, just done swim, bike, run. You are going to limit the top end of what you're capable of. So strength training is important for sprint, is important for Olympic, but it gets more important as you go from sprint to Olympic to half Ironman to full Ironman. Endurance. Okay, so the final aspect that I had mentioned there, the endurance aspect is obviously the factor in training between sprint and Ironman as you get longer that changes the most. However, the training for it, the premise of how you build up endurance to do each distance really stays the same. You start with whatever you're capable of doing and gradually every week or so you can add on anywhere between about five and 10% of the distance or time that you did the week prior. And you basically week by week as you do say two weeks on, one week rest, two weeks on, one week rest, you can go up 10%, up 10%, rest back down say to 30 to 40% less than the distance that you completed. Then go back up five to 10% than you did the previous on week. You just keep doing that layering on more and more volume and your body will accept the volume really, really quickly. Speed takes a long time for your body to figure out how to build that. There's muscle recruitment, there's strength, there is neuromuscular power, there's neuromuscular connections that need to be created. But endurance is probably the easiest part of all this. Like if you're worrying that you aren't gonna be able to go as long as you think you're going to have to go in a race, do six big weekends, boom. You're done. Actually thinking back to when I did my 37 kilometer open water marathon swim last summer, there were only about, yeah, six weekends where I swam longer than 9K in a day. Once I got to about a five hour swim, I knew that I could go on for a long, long time. So here's some parameters for how far you should be able to build up for each of the distances. Going swim, bike, run for a sprint about a 1500 meter swim, about a 35K bike, and then about a 7K run. You should be able to build up your long workouts 
to these numbers. An Olympic, about a 2,000 meter swim, about a 60K bike, and about a 14K run. A half Ironman, about a 2,700 meter swim, about a 130K bike, and about a 23K run. An Ironman, about a 4,500 meter swim, 190K bike, and a run, two runs separated of about two and a half hours each. We don't wanna be doing like a 40K run. You have a really big chance of getting injured doing that. But if you can build up your endurance to be able to do this, this is like more than enough. Now, I promised you info on how you incorporate your zone training into the triathlon training plan, whether you're doing a sprint or an Ironman. I like to use a five zone system. First zone, really serious recovery. We're talking recovery workouts, we are talking your warm up, your cool down. Zone two, this is your meat and potatoes. This is where you build a ton of your endurance. These are long rides, long runs. This is where you're gonna spend the most amount of your time. This is still breathing fairly easily. It's not very taxing. It's actually going to feel like you've gotta hold yourself a little bit back because you can do it for so long. Between zones one and two, regardless of whether you are doing a sprint or an Ironman, you wanna spend probably close to 80% of your total training time in these two zones. Zone three, in and around here is where you race, but I'm gonna explain how, depending on sprint or Olympic. Zone four, this is fairly uncomfortable, but you can probably hold it for about three to seven minutes. This is like a really hard tempo. This is fairly top end aerobic kind of work. And zone five, this is your maximum sustained effort for anywhere from 10 seconds to three minutes. This is what we talked about at the start with speed. This is gonna be really painful. You're not gonna be able to hold it for very long. Now remember how I said zones one and two comprise about 80%. The other 20 is gonna be in zones four and five. If you are doing a sprint, you're gonna be closer to about 10% in zone five, 10% in zone four. You're working on that really top end speed in sprint. In the case of an Ironman, it's gonna be more like about 15% in your zone four, 5% in zone five, because you don't need that ultra top end speed. Zone three, this is a gray area of training. We don't spend a ton of time in that besides getting into the last few weeks, about four to six weeks before a race, and if you are doing an Ironman, you're gonna be sharpening up and doing more and more races at race pace, which is somewhere around high zone two, low zone three. If you are sharpening up for a sprint, you're gonna be sharpening up doing more race pace work at high zone three, low zone four. But other than that, both sprint and Ironman are about 80% zones one and two, 20% zones four and five, and then we sharpen up into the area of zone three that we're gonna be racing in. All of this is basically automated for you if you join Team Trainiac, and you can sign up for the waitlist there at triathlonterran.com forward slash team waitlist. All of this is set out, automated for you, because it's a lot to remember. So there you go, Trainiacs. I hope that whether you're going to be on Team Trainiac or not, this stuff helps you out. If you are on Team Trainiac, obviously, it's gonna be automated for you. If you're not planning on being on Team Trainiac, hopefully this helps you be faster, more efficient, understand how hard and how fast you should be going throughout the year and uh, just becoming a better triathlete. All right? Okay. Triathlonterran.com forward slash team waitlist if you want to go sign up and have this all automated for you. Later, Trainiacs.